So today we have an interesting geometrical problem. We take a square A, B, C, D. Now taking A, B and A, D as the diameters, we draw two semicircles inside the square. Now taking B as the center and A, B as the radius, we draw a quarter circle inside the square. Now we draw a circle inside the diagram such that it is tangent to both of the semicircles and the quarter circles. So now the question over here is to find the radius of this particular circle in terms of side length of the square. So this is Anmul Mishra and now let us see the solution. How can we find the value of x in terms of a? So first of all we will utilize the fact that the orange circle is tangent to the semicircles and the quarter circles. So before that just recall this theorem that if there is a bigger circle and there is another circle that is tangent to it either externally or either internally. The center of that smaller circle, the center of the bigger circle and that tangent point all these three would be in a straight line. Either the case is internally or either it's externally. In both the cases these three points would be collinear. So the same theorem we will utilize it over here because we have circular boundaries that are tangent to each other. So first of all we can notice that the quarter circle is tangent to this orange circle internally. Therefore the center of the quarter circle that is the point B, the center of the circle and this particular tangent point would be in a straight line. So let these three tangent points over here be P, Q and R and the center of the orange circle let it be the point O. Okay? So now we have seen that the quarter circle is tangent to this orange circle. Therefore the point P, the center of the orange circle, the center of the quarter circle in a straight line. Okay. okay, now recall that the radius of the quarter circle is equals to A. Okay, and radius of this orange circle is equals to X. So the distance from P to O is ultimately radius of this orange circle. Therefore the distance it would be equals to X. And the distance P to B is the radius of this quarter circle. Therefore, the complete distance of P to B would be equals to A. Okay, so now the distance of PO is X, the distance of PB is A. Therefore, the remaining distance, that is the distance of O to B, is going to be equals to longer minus the shorter, therefore A minus X. Okay, okay, now again make a note that the orange circle is tangent to this particular semicircle externally. Therefore, the center of the circle point O the tangent point that is the point R and the center of this semicircle. So let the center of the semicircle be point E. So recall that AB was the diameter of the semicircle, E has been taken as the center. Therefore EB is equals to EA equals to radius of the semicircle. Diameter was A, therefore radius becomes A upon 2. So radius of this semicircle is A upon 2. Similarly, if I mark the center of this other semicircle as the point F, Ft would be equals to Fa and that would be equals to A upon 2. Okay, so here we have the radius of the semicircles as A upon 2. So recall that the circle was tangent to the semicircle externally, therefore the point O, R and E would be in a straight line. The distance O, R is equals to X, the distance R, E is equals to A upon 2 that is the radius. Therefore, the complete distance of O to E would be equals to A upon 2 plus x. Okay. Now the third tangent point that is the point Q and that is between this particular semicircle and this circle and that is internal case. Again we can utilize the same theorem. Therefore the center of the semicircle, the center of the circle and the tangent point in a straight line. So I am just removing this marking for the radius. Okay. So now I am drawing a line segment joining the points F, O, Q and it would be a straight line. Now the distance OQ is equals to X radius of the circle. The distance FQ is equals to radius of the semicircle therefore A upon 2. Therefore the remaining distance that is FO would be equals to A upon 2 minus X. This is the distance of the line segment FO. Okay so here we have the distance of BO as A minus X, EO as A upon 2 plus X and FO as A upon 2 minus X. So these three distances are important, so I am just making the diagram a bit more clear, keeping these three line segments. Ok, so here we have marked the three important line segments with their lengths. Now I will draw one more additional line segment and this will join the point F 
and B. Now what can you say about the length of this yellow line segment? So carefully look at the triangle FAB is a right angle triangle at A. The height of this triangle is A upon 2 and the base is ultimately AB that is side of the square hence it would have a length A. So by applying the Pythagoras theorem in this triangle, we get the length of FB as root 5 times A upon 2. So after we get the length of FB, we marked all the important line segments. Now let us mark some of the angles. So what I will do is I will take the angle FBO as a variable equals to theta, the angle FBA as a variable alpha and the complete angle OBE as a variable beta. So here we can clearly see a relation between the three angles that beta is equals to theta plus alpha. Keep this relation as it is. Okay. Okay. So now my goal over here is to get the cosine value of all the three angles. So three angles are theta, beta and alpha. So first of all we can clearly see that the angle alpha is inscribed inside a right angle triangle. The triangle is F A B. The length of FA is A upon 2, the length of AB is A and the hypotenuse is root 5 times A upon 2 and this angle over here is alpha. So in this right angle triangle we can easily find the value for cos alpha. So cos alpha is base upon the hypotenuse, base is A and the hypotenuse is root 5 times A upon 2. A and A got cancelled out and this thing is 2 upon square root of 5 and this thing is the value for cos alpha. So out of the three angles, we just got the cosine value of one of this angle, okay? Now to get the cosine values of the other angle, what we required is the cosine rule. So remember the cosine rule that we take a triangle in that let any angle be theta, the sides are capital A, capital B and capital C. Then cosine rule says that the value of cos theta would be equals to square of the side added together that are adjacent to angle theta. So adjacent to angle theta are A and B. Therefore, they are square added. So, a square plus b square minus the square of opposite side to angle theta. So, opposite to angle theta is c. Therefore, minus c square upon 2 times product of adjacent. So, 2 times a times b. So, this is the cosine rule to get the value of any angle inside a triangle. So, the same cosine rule, first of all, I will apply in the triangle f o b. Now why in this triangle only because look carefully, the triangle FOB is like this way, this point is F, this point is O, this point is B. The side length FO is A upon 2 minus X, the side length OB is A minus X and the side length FB is root 5 times A upon 2. We have just found over there. And in this triangle only we have the angle theta that is the angle FBO. Therefore using the cosine rule the value for cos theta would be equals to root 5 times a upon 2 the complete square plus a minus x the complete square minus a upon 2 minus x the complete square upon 2 times root 5 times a upon 2 into a minus x. Now let us open the brackets in the numerator. It is all the same thing. Square of the adjacent added together minus the square of opposite upon 2 times the product of adjacent. Okay. And this all from the perspective of the angle theta. Now let us open the brackets in the numerator. So the first bracket is 5a square upon 4 plus the second bracket that is a square plus x square minus 2ax minus the third bracket that is minus a square upon 4 minus x square positive ax. Now here we can see that 5a square upon 4 and negative a square upon 4 will become a square only. Okay. Now we can see that a square plus a square so it will turn out to be 2 times a square. Positive x square, negative x square got cancelled out. Negative 2ax, positive ax will become negative ax. So 2a square minus negative ax, I can take a common. So inside the bracket, I will get 2 times a minus x. This thing divided by. And the denominator, we can see that 2 and 2 got cancelled out. So we have root 5 times a into a minus x. a and a got cancelled out. So we finally get the value for, for cos theta as equals to. 2 times a minus x divided by square root of 5 times a minus x. So using the cosine rule we got the cosine value of the other angle too that is the angle theta. Now the third angle that we need is the angle beta. And now to get the cosine value of the angle beta I will take the triangle OEB. So O 
P B and over here this angle is beta you can look in this diagram also the length OE is A upon 2 plus X the length OB is A minus X and the base AB is A upon 2 so in this triangle also we have all the three sides and the angle beta so using the cosine rule the value for cos beta would be equals to square of the adjacent added together therefore A upon 2 the complete square plus A minus X the complete square minus the square of opposite therefore A upon 2 plus X the complete square divided by 2 times product of adjacent so 2 times a by 2 into a minus x now opening the brackets in the numerator therefore a square upon 4 plus the second bracket will give me a square plus x square minus 2 a x minus the third bracket so negative a square upon 4 negative x square and negative a x so in the numerator we can see that positive a square upon 4 negative a square upon 4 got cancelled out positive x square negative x square got cancelled out and further we can say that negative 2ax and negative ax so it will turn out to be negative 3 times ax so in the numerator the only remaining thing is a square minus 3ax and from that too I can take a common so inside the bracket a minus 3x divided by now in the denominator part 2 and 2 got cancelled out what remains is a into a minus x so finally I can cancel out the a also so the value for cos beta would be equals to a minus 3x divided by a minus x so here we have the cosine value for the third angle also so here we have got the cosine value of all the three angles theta beta and alpha and remember the relation that beta is equals to theta plus alpha so beta was equals to theta plus alpha now in this equation I can take cos on both of the side therefore cos beta would be equals to cos of theta plus alpha now recall the identity for cos theta plus alpha that is cos theta cos alpha that is cos theta cos alpha minus sine theta into sine alpha okay now from the third equation we have the value for cos beta that is a minus 3 times x upon a minus x this thing equals to cos theta that is having a value 2 times a minus x divided by root 5 times a minus x multiplied with cos alpha that is having a nice value 2 upon square root of 5 minus sin theta so the value for cos theta is this thing so we can use a simple identity so the value for cos theta would be square root of 5 times a minus x the complete square minus 2 times a minus x the complete square divided by root 5 times a minus x I use the universal identity sin square theta plus cos square theta equals to 1 to get this thing now the same thing we can apply to get the value for sin alpha from cos alpha so the value for cos alpha is 2 upon square root of 5 therefore the value for sin alpha would be square root of root 5 the complete square that is 5 minus 2 square that is 4 divided by root 5 now here the numerator will turn out to be 1 okay and also we can simplify this numerator so it will turn out to be 5a square plus 5x square minus 10ax minus 4a square minus x square plus 4ax so 5a square minus 4a square becomes a square plus 5x square minus x square becomes plus 4x square negative 10ax plus 4ax becomes negative 6ax so the numerator part of this thing we just got it and that is a square plus 4x square minus 6ax and this thing in square root remember that now let us simplify this thing further so we can see that on from both of the side we can first of all cancel out a minus x that is a common denominator now root 5 into root 5 becomes 5 root 5 into root 5 becomes 5 so both the terms on right hand side has a common denominator that is 5 so I can multiply that on the left hand side so 5 into a minus 3x equals to 2 times a minus x multiplied with 2 gives me 4 times a minus 2 times x minus this complete square root that is square root of a square plus 4x square minus 6ax it's multiplied with 1 so directly that square root okay now opening the bracket on the left hand side will give me 5a minus 15 times x now this thing can be simplified further 5a and 4a I can shift this on this side negative 15x negative 2x I can shift this on this side so doing so will finally give me 5a minus 4a that is a 
negative 15x positive 2x that is negative 13x and this thing is negative of that square root so i can take negative on both of the side so the left hand side will turn out to be 13 times x minus a equals to the right hand side that is square root of a square plus 4x square minus 6ax now i can simply square both of the side so on the right hand side square and square root got cancelled out on the left hand side we need to open the bracket using the identity so 13x the complete square 169x square plus a square minus 26 times ax equals to this thing a square and a square got cancelled out okay now i will simply shift 4x square on the left hand side and negative 26ax on the right hand side so on the left hand side will have 169x square minus 4x square and the right hand side will have 26ax minus 6ax so simplifying the left hand side so 165x square equals to 20ax i can factor out the x so 165x equals to 20 times a now the requirement was to get x in terms of a so i will simply divide both of the sides with 165 so on the left hand side we'll have x equals to 20 times a upon 165 now we can see that from the table of pi it goes 4 and the denominator is 33 so finally we get x equals to 4 times a upon 33 and that's the answer that we were looking for look carefully we have the value of x in terms of a so this was my way to solve this particular question basically it was a trigonometrical approach and if you have any other method other than this or else if you have any other question that you think i should try you can do comment below and if it's hard to comment you can email me or else you can send it to me on my instagram the link is in the description